Algebra 1, 10.5c, find the least common multiples of rational expressions. Did you know we can add or subtract unlike denominators by finding their least common multiple? Yeah, this is the same as finding their least common denominator. If we wanted to add 1 half plus 3 sevenths, we just need to find the least common denominator, don't we? The least common multiple for the 2 and the 7. Well, that'd be 14. So all we have to do is find out where what we have to multiply this by or this by so that the denominators would be 14, right? And then we can add them. We can do this with rational expressions also. We start by finding the least common multiple of their denominators. And we can add or subtract them. We factor each expression, and then once they're factored, we get the product by using each factor the greatest number of time it occurs. I'll show you in a second. We use the one that it shows up the most times, all right? But remember, a least common multiple of two numbers can actually be one of the two numbers. If we have one half plus three fourths, the least common multiple can be that four, can't it? So it can be one of the rational expression's denominators, can't it? All right, so you're gonna wanna take some notes and I hope you've reviewed factoring from chapter six because that's really gonna help you. We really need to remember how to factor, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna be lost. If you wanna find the least common multiple of A and B, it's just A times B. That's an easy one. Take a look at this one. If we wanna find the least common multiple of 3x squared and 2xy, we factor the 3x squared, that's three times x times x, right? And the 2xy is two times x times y. Now, we've got a three, a two, an x, and a y, right, in all of these. Where does the, does the three occur the most? Well, it only occurs here. So we've got a three, and we put it there. Where does the x occur the most? It occurs in this one. See, there's only one here, but there's two here. So we're gonna use the two and put it over here. There's only one two right here, so we're gonna put that there. And there's only one y, so we're gonna put that there. So see how we pulled out the ones that there were the most of? Or the only place it showed up. So, you know, three and two only appeared once, so we needed them. We got two x's, so we're gonna take the two instead of the one. And we only have one y, so we're gonna take that. So now we have three times two, that's six, x squared y. See, that's our least common multiple. Let's try it again. We've got eight x squared y squared, and we've got negative 12 x y to the third power. So let's factor this. This is two times two times two, x times x and y times y, all right? For this one, we've got negative two times two times three times x times y times y times y, see? Now, the two occurs more in this one, doesn't it? Because there's three of them. There's only two of them here. So we're gonna use this. And there's only one x here. There's two x's here, so it occurs more here. So we're going to use this. And there's only two y's here where there's three y's here. So we're going to use this. Because that's only got two of them. And this one doesn't even have a three, so we need this three. See? The two occurred more in this one, and the x occurred more in this one. The three occurs more in this one, and the y occurs more in this one. Now we take our circled ones, we put them together. We've got two times two times two times three, times x times x, times y times y times y. And we find the product, we multiply them all together now. So two times two is four, times two is eight. Eight times three is 24. Then we've got x squared y to the third power. See, see how we did that? This one's probably gonna be the best example for what I'm trying to explain, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Now we've got a trinomial x squared plus 5x minus 6 and a binomial x squared minus 1. This is where your factoring comes in. We need to factor this trinomial, okay? And it factors as x plus 6, x minus 1. This one factors as x plus 1, x minus 1. And since there's already an x minus 1, we don't use this one, see? There's already one right here. So, which ones are different? 
We'll pull them out. x plus 6, x minus 1, x plus 1. Those are the ones we use. That's the least common multiple. See? All right? Let's try it again. Now we've got 3x plus 6y and x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared. So when we factor this one, we get 3 times x plus 2y. When we factor this polynomial, this trinomial, we get x plus 2y squared. See? See that? It's a binomial square. So because there's already an x plus 2y here, and this one is squared, we're going to use this one because that means there's two of them, doesn't it? x plus 2y with the little 2 on the outside means we have two of them, doesn't it? It means we have x plus 2y whoops, and x plus 2y. That's what it means when we have that little 2 on the outside, that little exponent on the outside. So there's more of them here. See, there's, there's no exponent, so there's only one here. So we're going to use this one, and we're going to use that 3, and that ends up becoming our least common multiple. See that? Let's try this one. We've got x squared plus 4 and x plus 1. Well, these can't be factored, so the least common multiple is their product. So the least common multiple is x squared plus 4 times x plus 1. See? Let's look at this one. We have y minus 2 and 2 minus y. Now, if you remember from our previous video, we've talked about this in previous videos, okay? And I'll show you with real numbers in a second. Because y minus 2 is the same thing as negative 2 minus y, it's this one with a negative sign in front of it, and this 2 minus y is the same thing as a negative sign in front of that one, we can use either of them as the least common multiple. It could either be y minus 2 or 2 minus y. So here's with real numbers to explain it. Let's say y equals 6 and we had y minus 2. Well, then that would mean we have 6 minus 2, doesn't it? We can take this 6 minus 2, and it's going to equal the same thing as 2 minus 6 with a negative sign in front of it. See? If we distribute this negative sign, we have negative 2, and two negatives make a positive, so we have plus 6. And negative 2 plus 6 is a positive 4, isn't it? Same thing as 6 minus 2. And if the y equals 6, and we have 2 minus y, that's 2 minus 6, we could take this 6 minus 2 and put a negative sign in front of it, and it's going to equal the same thing. We can distribute this negative sign as negative 6 plus 2, because two negatives make a positive. So now we have negative 6 plus 2. Well, negative 6 plus 2 is a negative 4. 2 minus 6 is a negative 4, and this is a negative 4. So see how it's the same thing? All we did was we kind of crisscrossed it and put a negative sign in front of it, and it ended up equaling the other one. Okay? So in that case, we can use either one as the least common multiple. I know this is really, really confusing, but the most confusing part of it is if you don't remember how to factor. Okay? So I have got links in this description on the factoring videos, and if it takes you 20 or 30 minutes of your life to review these factoring videos, it's going to help you for months while you're doing this, okay? So, just take a few minutes out of your life to review them so that you can move forward, okay? And when we're using this least common multiple method, it's easier when we add or subtract more than two rational expressions or when the denominators have a common factor, okay? In our next video, we're going to talk about addition with unlike denominators using the least common multiple. That's going to be 10.5d. And if you want to go back to the factoring polynomials playlist and how to FOIL and binomial squares and all of that, that's going to, there's going to be links in this playlist. And all of our previous videos that we talked about, okay, with like denominators, all those links are going to be in here, okay? Lots of links, all right? So you shouldn't have any Swiss cheese holes in your education because all those links will be there, okay? All right. Let's talk about adding these unlike denominators using least common multiples. Bye.